Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the weekend walkthrough where I take a look at what happened in this weekend's Premier League matches from a fancy Premier League perspective. And we'll start off with Aston Villa against Newcastle, which is a really interesting game because it featured two, two teams that are looking really good lately. And in this game, Aston Villa came out on top and that was mostly down to Oli Watkins, who was amazing once again. So I picked uh, in Gaming 27 when everyone sold Holland and you had to find a replacement striker. Some people went with Kai Havertz, which has, which has failed terribly. I went with Alexander Isak personally, which was pretty good to, until this game week, where Ola Watkins completely destroyed him with 16 points for Watkins. Had a beautiful assist, headed it down for uh, Jacob Ramsey, who scored the opening goal. And then he scored two goals in the second half as well, Watkins. He had another goal disallowed for offside, and he had two other really good shots on target that could have easily been goals as well. So 16 points, his biggest haul in uh, FL this season. Uh, and it could have been a lot more. It could have been... Could have been a five goal game from, from Watkins as well, who looks unstoppable lately. So great game from Aston Villa who who won 3-0. Moving on to everything against Fulham. It was sort of Burnt Leno's uh, revenge game compared to or against Mopai. Neil Mopai was the one who injured him for Arsenal, which started uh, the end for was the beginning of the end for Leno as the Arsenal goalkeeper. Emmy Martinez became the starting goalkeeper for Arsenal, and then the next season they brought in Ramsdale. And Leno had to go to Fulham eventually. And Leno has been a really good goalkeeper this whole season, really, and saved Fulham at two opportunities for Mopai. Mopai had two huge chances that he missed. The one, the first one was a header pretty much straight at Leno, and then the second one was a really good save from Leno coming out and, and saving it with his hand. So Leno had a really good game. Mopai did not have a good game. He has been a pretty much a huge flop for Everton as a striker, and he's probably not going to start that much going forward, even with Calvert-Lewin injured. I think Damari Gray will be back as the starting striker for Everton, but Everton conceded some some pretty easy goals against Fulham. Fulham took their goals really nicely, actually. So Everton, just in terms of FL perspective, there's not really much to talk about with either of these teams. Don't really want to have any Everton players. And apart from Andreas Pereira, who's like a cheap differential option or cheap enabler option in midfield, you don't really have that many interesting players from Fulham either. But what is interesting is that Everton play against Crystal Palace in game 32 when a lot of people will want to free hit in players from Crystal Palace. We're going to talk more about Crystal Palace eventually, but Everton seems like a really good team to target at the moment. Another good team to target at the moment is Chelsea, who got a really lucky opening goal against Brighton. A deflected shot from uh, Gallagher went past uh, Sanchez in goal, who actually got the start because Steele was, was injured. And speaking of injuries in Brighton, they had two more injuries. Uh, one of them was for Joel Weltman, who made, who meant that, which meant that uh, Pascal Gross had to play right back, and then McAllister was put down as the centre mid, and then Enciso came on as the attacking mid, and he looked really good. He had a good shot off the post, and he also had a shot that went straight in, a really nice rocket shot that went straight into the goal. He beats Kepa with a long shot, which is uh, pretty common these days, apparently. There's some rumors that or talks that Kepa keeps conceding long shots, but I'm not here to specula speculate that much about that. But Enciso looked really good, so I think he might be the starter going forward, which is just another great option for, for Brighton, and there are many, many, many good midfielders in FPL. Uh, as far as the midfielders go, uh, I think McAllister, if he plays as a center mid, he's much less appealing as, uh, as an option for Man City, so... That might be your route to get Salah eventually in game week 34. You might have to sell McAllister and bring in, bring in either March or Mitoma or potentially even Enciso if, if he keeps playing this well for Brighton. But the other big injury for Brighton was uh, Evan Ferguson who had to be subbed off with an injury and uh, Welbeck came on and had the best expected goal involvement for Brighton. Welbeck has been pretty good every, every time he's gotten the chance for Brighton. So... He's a really good option if Evan Ferguson is out for, for a long while, but let's hope that Ferguson is, is fit and ready to go because he's such a good and interesting player and so young as well. Moving on, we have uh, Wolverhampton against Brentford. Brentford and Tony, sort of unlucky. They had the better XG. Tony had a really good chance to score where it was just a save or off the post. I can't remember exactly, but he had like a near post shot that almost went in. And he also was pretty close to getting assist as well for i think it was during when it was nil nil in the game actually so he had a shot that was saved and then uh, palenda da silva josh da silva could have scored the the rebound but he put it just over the goal so no goal return for tony once uh, once again like, he got a goal last time but he missed the penalty as well so he only got five points and this time he was pretty unlucky as well so anyone that kept tony rather than selling him for wall on last game week can feel pretty unlucky uh, as far as wolverhampton go they can feel pretty lucky because they got two 
kind of lucky goals. Costa got his first goal for Wolverhampton, and he sort of had a heavy touch in the in the box, and it looked like he was going to lose the ball, so he took a stab at the ball, and uh, the defender that tried to clear it cleared it into Costa's leg and, and into the goal. So pretty uh, pretty lucky opening goal for Wolverhampton, who to be honest looked pretty good to, uh, at the start of this match. Like they they got, I think the lead was deserved because they had some really good chances at the start of the match created some really good looks at least and had like several shots that were that were blocked by Brentford's uh, defenders and then Costa scored a kind of a lucky goal the second goal was also kind of lucky but it was after really good performance from Matias Nunez who did a really nice run on the right hand side went into the box and then once again a defender tried to clear it and uh, Huang Hiechan was at the correct position at the correct time and, and scored 2-0 so huge three points for Wolverhampton another loss for Brentford so it's looking not that good for Brentford lately, but Tony still looks like a decent option. So he's still he's going to be sort of a differential free hit picking at 32 because he still didn't get a yellow card. He's still on nine yellow cards, so he didn't get too much suspension that he he will get once he gets another yellow card. So that's something to to take note of note of as well. Uh, so happening is Crystal Palace yet another great result for Crystal Palace, yet another bad result for Southampton. Let's talk about the the highlight of the match, which was uh, Brecci essay especially his second goal, was really well taken, showed his nice close control, got the ball turned pretty quickly and shot a really nice shot for along the ground into the far post. Great shot from SA, he looks looks brilliant. Lisa also looks brilliant. He could have had the opening goal, but he was uh, ruled out for offside. He started his run just a little too too early. If he had started it a bit later, he still would have scored probably and he would have, would have been onside as well. So. Ulisa looks pretty good, and he had a, a free kick that hit the post as well. So both Elisa and Essay look like great options when they play Everton in game 32. And even Jordan Ayew, who keeps being in amongst like the, the chances and goals for Crystal Ballas, he he's actually listed as a midfielder, which, which surprised me. I thought he was listed as a striker but or as a forward, but he's also another midfielder to consider. So the, those are three decent options for Crystal Ballas in, in midfield for game week 32 free hit. So that's something to take note of. A lot of players and uh, and things to take note of in the Spurs Bournemouth game as well. Bournemouth kind of lucky win if you look at the expected goals, but they took their goals really well and they have so many good underrated players at, at Bournemouth. People say that they have the worst squad in the league, but I don't think so. I think they have really good players. I think Solanke is underrated. He does a lot more than just creating and scoring goals. He does a lot of stuff for Bournemouth and uh, Billing is really, really good as the attacking midfielder for them. Tavernier, who's just back from injury as well, is looking amazing. He's a really tidy player. He has a really nice shot, a really nice close control as well. I think he's amazing. And uh, Dango Otara, who scored the, the winning goal as well uh, against Spurs, also looks great. He's really quick and uh, showed some really nice composure as well for the, the winning goal. Really nice cutback and just beautiful, easy finish, really, uh, into the far post. And that secured three huge points for Bournemouth, who, who beat Spurs, who... Who's going to struggle to keep uh, fourth place? But the good thing for Spurs is that Hang Son looks back to his best. He had a really nice chance where he had like several step overs and looked super quick. Um, that didn't return or end up in a goal, but he scored pretty close after or before. I can't remember the exact order of events, but he scored a decent goal. Perisic got the ball high up the pitch, passed it back 45 degrees to uh, Son, who slotted it home easily. Son looked the, the better player out of him and Kane, and I think he's also the better option for, for a free hit and giving 32 as well. So, so yeah, you got to keep that in mind. But Bournemouth, really huge win, and I think they are just staying up now because they look really good lately. So really fun game, end-to-end -end stuff, and especially towards the end of the game, Richard Lawson had a goal disallowed once again, his third disallowed goal in the Premier League. He's still waiting for his opening goal in the Premier League. Someone who did get that was uh, Danjuma, who came on and, and scored. He's played very little since Spurs stole him away from Everton, but scored a nice goal against his former club, celebrated like crazy, uh, but it ended up being just like a consolation goal in the end because Bournemouth got the win with a 3-2 goal with uh, Watara. So really fun match and really fun to watch. Next up, we have Man City against Leicester. This was uh, more of a foregone conclusion pretty early. Uh, City took the lead with John Stones, really nice volley after a set piece, and then Holland just showed his class once again. Got a penalty, which was almost saved, to be honest, by uh, Everson, who still got his got to keep his place in goal for Leicester, even with Dean Smith as manager. But Holland, you can you can't really say that it's a bad pen considering he scored uh, 
he hit the post and in on the shot but it was a really weak shot and Everson was after the ball but he just was just a little too late to save it so Holland got his penalty goal and then right after or pretty pretty soon after he got his second goal as well meaning that he has 32 two goals in total in the Premier League which is a record for um, for the Premier League with 20 teams he still is two goals off the top goal scoring record which is, which is 34 from Alan Shearer and Andy Cole I think who share that uh, record but that's with 22 teams in the league and several more or more matches to play as well so Holland is going to break that record again he's breaking all the records in the Premier League and uh, looked amazing good pass from De Bruyne and it's just really unstoppable when De Bruyne passes to Holland but second half Leicester looked a lot better and they actually won the XG battle which is interesting 2.36 compared to 206 uh, in terms of XG and that's down to uh, Kelechi and Nacho coming on in the second half and proving once again that he is the best striker for, for Leicester. He had some disappointing games and lost his place, especially with the interim manager that they had, uh, Adam Sadler, almost Adam Sadler. But Leicester looked really bad under the interim manager, but they looked a lot better now with uh, Dean Smith in charge. And uh, Iannaccio as well really should get to play as a striker going forward because he unlocked something in Madison as well that, that we could see in the second half. Madison had a really huge chance that he missed and he could have passed Iannaccio there and Iannaccio could have passed Madison in a different opportunity as well. So once they get that in order, I think Leicester are really a fun team to, to watch going forward. So I'm going to talk more about Iannaccio and Madison later on in this video as well. Moving on to the next game though, Nottingham Forest against Man United. Again, foregone conclusion, easy win for Man United. Nottingham Forest are looking terrible, even at home this time. They've been they've had really good home form this season, but lately as well, they've been slipping up even at home. And Man United just looked like the way better team. And especially Bruno Fernandes is looking amazing lately. Sadly for FL players, it doesn't return. Uh, it doesn't end in FL points, but he was so close. Several shots that were only just saved by Keller Navas, who is an outstanding goalkeeper. So Fernandes had really... Good shooting chances that almost went in. Really good shots as well. Some good shots at shot attempts. He almost got the assist for the first goal. He had a really nice pass to Marcel, who shot it, but then was saved by Navas again. And Anthony scored the rebound. Anthony as well had a really good game. He had some really dangerous shots. But the most important or the most impressive part from Anthony in this game was the second goal where he cut in from the side. And Kevin, last uh, podcast, last FPL School podcast, he mentioned how Anthony was a much better assister at Ajax, and he sort of, so, and he sort of showed um, what he can do as an assister uh, on the second goal from Man United. Really brilliant pass to Diogo Dalot, who got to start as a left back, and that might be a regular occurrence now going forward because Luke Shaw is injured and he's going to come back, but most likely Luke Shaw will play as a centre back, considering Man United are lacking the Sander Martinez and Rafael Run at the moment. Shaw has been playing left or left centre back earlier in the season to 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 really good results as well. They've they've kept a clean sheet mostly when Shaw has been their left centre back, and that might mean starts for Dalot because this time Malasse wasn't wasn't here. He was he was injured, so Dalot got the chance to start as left back, and Dalot has shown yet time and time again he's shown that he's a really good fullback, and even as left back, he looked really good for Man United. Juan Bissaka has been really amazing at right back for Man United this season, and I think Dalot should play left back going forward as well. So that's something to keep note of as well. But Bruno Fernandes, his FL points will come soon enough, I'm sure. He looks so close, and now he finally got to play as number ten because Casemiro was back and Eriksen played because Sabitzer had to get subbed off in the warm up. So, so yeah, Man United, interesting team going forward. Everyone that tripled up with uh, Rashford, uh, Fernandez, and Shaw can consider themselves really unlucky because they kept another clean sheet. And Fernandez has been unlucky to play as a deep playing playmaker. And even now, he didn't get points. He could have had a lot, point, a lot of points against Everton last time. He could have had a lot of points in this match, but he ended up blanking once again. So, really unlucky for him. Also, really unlucky for Arsenal to have the one match of the season where West Ham actually got some luck their way. <laughs> I'm a West Ham fan, so I know that West Ham have been pretty unlucky this season, but. Against Arsenal in Sunday's first match, they were really lucky. So Arsenal completely dominated the first half an hour of this game. It looked like they were toying with West Ham, scored two really nice goals. Hissels from Ben White assist. And then Martinelli assisted Odegaard for the 2-0 goal. Seemed like Arsenal were going to win this easily, like City uh, did the day before. But West Ham fought back, won a penalty after Declan Rice took the ball from uh, Thomas Partey and uh, passed it to Paqueta. Paqueta... I have to admit, even as a West Ham fan, he dived 
probably shouldn't have been a penalty. Probably even should have been a shouldn't have been a situation at all because Stefan Rice sort of it hit his stomach and then hit his arm. So I don't know about the rules because it didn't really lead directly to a goal. So maybe that's why they didn't call it because it led directly to a penalty instead. So I don't know. The, the handball rules are really confusing, but. West Ham were really lucky to get that goal, but to be fair, that meant that goal meant that West Ham got new belief in uh, in their team, and they actually played really well after that. And uh, the second goal was sort of also sort of lucky, but it was kind of wasn't that undeserved either because West Ham had some some decent chances, and they could have even scored three two with Antonio at the end where he headed it off the post. But anyways, two 0 came from Jared Bowen, who's been really good at home this whole season. Uh, it was a looping pass from uh, Kerr after Arsenal had cleared a set piece. And the ball went up to Bowen, who smartly stayed onside when a lot of other West Ham attacking players were offside. And Bowen took advantage, fooled everyone, and scored a really nice goal. 2-2, Arsenal couldn't really do much at the end of the match. They struggled to get past West Ham and, and Declan Rice, who I'm a huge fan of. He had like a, a decent game, not his best game, to be honest, but like he had a game that shows why he's such a wanted man in, in Premier League and why he's worth the 80 to 100 million pounds that you got to pay for him. And I think he'd be amazing as uh, the replacement for Shaka for Arsenal. I think he, he offers a lot more, both defensively and offensively, uh, compared to Shaka, who's still a really good player in his own right. But but yeah, fair enough. Just let Rice be at West Ham as well. I, I wouldn't mind that. But 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 yeah, he's, he's a great player uh, that you need to watch. Uh, or You probably already know about Declan Rice, but I think... Some people are underrating him because he plays for West Ham. And he's just an amazing top six player, really, and deserves to play at the highest level. He deserves to play in the Champions League, and he's going to. I have to admit that as a West Ham fan. But anyways, this is a fail video. Let's more, talk more about some FPL options. Gaming 32 is a pretty huge week in terms of uh, free hits. A lot of people will use their free hit, me included. And these are some of the players that I think are kind of good differentials to go for. So... Leicester, most people have been put off by Leicester. They've lost so many games in a row now that you don't really consider them that much. But I think Madison and Ianacho showed in the second half against City that they are really good options to have in uh, in Game Week 32, especially considering they play Wolverhampton at home. Wolverhampton considered four goals against Leeds not too long ago, and I think Leicester could do could do the same. It's usually a really high-scoring game between Wolverhampton and Leicester, so I think both Madison and Ianacho... I think Ianacho is going to start because he looked so good after he came on at the, at the half. And I think Madison also looked really good. So I think those, those two guys are really good uh, differential picks uh, for your free hits. And the third one is Hung uh, Son. A lot of people will probably target uh, Harry Kane, but I think there are so many good striker options, Ianacho included, that I think it's better to go with someone like Hung Son, who is going to be more a differential. He's not owned by that many people. And uh, he looks like the better player out of the two, out of him and Kane lately. So... So yeah, I think he's a really good uh, good option as well for for your free hit. But these are just some of the free hit differential options that I'm going to talk about this week. Uh, in tomorrow's video, Tuesday's video, I'm going to talk about uh, the template free hit team, like the 15 man squad that most people are looking to get for the free hits. And then I'm going to create another team that is completely different from that template team. I'm going to select 15 players that are not in the template team, the 15 players that I think are the best outside of the template, and that's going to be some interesting fun players that you could uh, take a punt on as well um, as compared to like the normal players like Sala, Martinelli, Watkins, those guys who will be in pretty much every squad, uh, Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, those guys. So I'm going to talk more about some differentials as well in tomorrow's video. So please subscribe and, and you won't miss that and uh, like the video if you found it interesting and uh, comment down below if you have some other players that you are interested in, in uh, looking at some players maybe you have some suggestions for me because i haven't completed the or haven't made like the free hit differential team yet so if there are any interesting differentials you think that i have missed you can mention that in the comments so so yeah that's pretty much it for me for this uh, video thank you for watching and uh, see you next time